Okay, so that person, right? This is the um, you know, la latest film from Susanna Fogel. It is written by Michelle Ashford. The film is produced by Helen uh doo -doo -doo. Let me get to this. Yeah, so produced by Helen Estrabrook and Jeremy Steckler. It is executive produced by Anna Marsh, Rachel Clara Hinchberg, Daniel Hank, Max Handelman, Susanna Fogel, Gino Falsetto, Shana Eddie Groof. Elizabeth Banks and Michelle Ashford. It is co produced by Derek Pettison. So, Heather McIntosh handled the music, Manuel Bileta, the cinematography. It's edited by Jacob, Jacob Craycroft, Deanna Brigidi. Took care of the casting, Sally Levi, production design, art direction is Bo Tepper, set decoration, we got Caroline B. Scott and Ben Campbell, costume design, Ava Eureko Hammer, hair and makeup, prosthetics, Josh Turi, Jenny Pendergraft, Joanne McCarthy. Joshua First, Erin Aker, and Brian Abbott, our cast. Well, people, Margaret is played by Amelia Jones, okay? Her um, best friend, Taylor, is played by Geraldine Viswanathan, I think, that's how you say a name. I might well be wrong. Hmm. It does happen sometimes. Okay. So her mother, Kelly, is played by Hope Davis. Um, her professor, Dr. Enid Zabla, is played by Isabella Rossellini. Um... Who else do we have? We've got her friend Beth, played by Lisa Cushy, um, and Dave, played by Josh Andreas Riviera. There's Robert, played by Nicholas Braun, right? We got Ernie, played by Christopher Schuyler, um, Billy, played by Melissa Lehman. Clay, played by Isaac Powell. Kyle, played by Jeremy Gill. Lucas, played by Kyle Selling. The police officer, Elaine, is played by Liza Colon Zayas. Peter is played by Michael Gonda Galdalfini. Um, Dr. Resnick is played by Fred Malamand. Uh, Laura is played by Camille Umoff. I, I think that's probably the, the main group of people. James Madley is played by Donald Ellis Watkins. Uh, yeah. Okay. The gist of the story... Margaret meets Robert while working at the concession stand at a local independent movie theater. He comes in alone, buys popcorn and red vines. She is bored and flirts with him, and they develop a stilted rapport. From the beginning, he is thin-skinned and insecure, but she finds that if she goes to the extra effort of not saying anything that might potentially offend him, they can pull off a playful banter. Does she have feelings for him, or are they copies of feelings? Robert is cute enough, 
that she could have drummed up an imaginary crush on him if he'd sat across from her during a doll class. She is 20 and knows that he's older, but thinks he's in his late 20s. He turns out to be 34. Yo, that is a um a weird synopsis. It's a weird fucking long synopsis that doesn't really give you anything. Doesn't really give you anything. I don't know, man. That's a uh, yeah, kind of bizarre. Kind of bizarre. I don't really think there's um a lot else. Uh, let's go with this one. Margaret, a college sophomore, goes on a date with the older Robert. She finds that in real life, Robert doesn't live up to the Robert she has been flirting with over text. Hmm. Yeah. It says cat person is a razor sharp exploration of the gender divide, the quagmire of navigating modern dating, and the dangerous projections we make in our minds about the person at the other end of the phone. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know, man. It's difficult, right? This is actually based on a short story of the same name by Kirsten Rupenian, right? It was published in the U New Yorker in 2017. So I think, you know, a story that explores those those themes that were mentioned, right? The um, gender divide, date navigating, dating, the way we project. That that's interesting. I think with cat person, like in the second half of the film. Right, it gets a bit more like you can see that it's trying to get into those topics, right? You've got Taylor, who is um, Margaret's best friend, right? And Taylor has an online forum where she talks about feminine right, feminist rights, and all of that kind of stuff. But that's as far as we kind of get right there, there's not really major things that get brought up you know they they use the analogy of ants because she's working in i'm not quite sure i, I think i think it is mentioned but i can't remember the name of the course that she's doing but in it i think like she's doing amphipology maybe um but yeah, so they're looking at bones, right? And so there's a mention. She looks at a bone and just like, oh, I mean, obviously, it looks like someone's been hit over the head. I think it's a sacrifice. And I think a lot of assumptions. Now, they could be right, you know? But I think that was a big thing, right? So it's just like, oh, so that's a woman. She was sacrificed, you know what I mean? Oppressed, boom, boom, boom. Then... They've got an ant tank in the uh, in the room, right? So Dr. Enid, she she's been looking after these ants for years. And you know, so they make the reference about the female ant, right? The fact that without the female ant, the hive is nothing. The hive dives a bit like bees. Right. So I think those things are used to kind of point out, you know, gender politics and all of that kind of stuff, right? But the film did feel like it kind of meanders at the beginning, right? We do get these kind of dream sequences as they were, right? There's a situation with a dog, um, Gosh, there was something else I forget now. But yeah, so we, we have these things where, you know, we we have her do something and then the scene, she might double look, then the scene plays out, but then you realize that's not really what's going on, right? It's 
a fault. It's a dream, it, it, you know, that kind of thing. So we do have a couple of those at the start. But I feel we don't really have any debt. That was a big thing for me. Like, we don't really have anything, right? We don't know what the deal with Margaret is, right? She's working in the, the, in the cinema. She's studying. We don't know her age for ages, right? I, I honestly thought that they were meant to be younger at one point. But they're 20. And look. 20, I know in the States, right, you, you have to be 21 to drink. But, I mean, you can drive, you can smoke, you can do all of those things before that point. And you, you, you are grown, right? You're still young, right? You still don't know shit, for sure. But you know stuff, right? You, 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 you do know some things about navigating you know certain situations you might not be great at it but there's something you know i think if this film was when they're like 16 17 18 it would make a bit more sense some of the things that happen but at 20 there are some, there's some craziness happening. There's definitely some crazy shit, right? Like, the cinema thing, I, I can get, because in the IMB, the um, synopsis where it's like, oh, she's trying to pull off play, playful flirting and stuff, but he's very thin-skinned. I mean, <laughs> Flirting and, and chat is a very subjective thing. You know what I mean? So you can say that's what it was, but to someone else who doesn't know you, right, who might be used to something completely different, they might not know that, right? So it, I think it's, it's, it's a weird one to be like, Ah, oh, yeah, that's what she was clearly flirting, and he didn't get it, right? Because it was odd, right? It was odd. So, you know, you don't know. But it was just these weird interactions, these weird interactions. Now, you can, I think there are, con, you know, these situations we can find ourselves in, especially when you're younger. You know, maybe all your friends are dating. And you're constantly the third wheel. Constantly the third fucking wheel. And you're just like, you know what? I need to get a day. Right? So if it was something like that, you can kind of understand the, her going out with Robert. But we don't know. This is the thing. It's just, it always, it just feels a little random. Like the date, like get the, the whole number exchange felt a little bit random because they weren't really talking before that point. So that was weird. I hated all the text messaging because, you know, you've got this tiny text on screen and then they'd throw up loads of messages at one time and it's, there's no pause. Right. So I'm kind of like, even someone with great eyesight, are they going to be able to read all of that fucking, you know, information on the screen? I don't know. Right. There was a lot there. There was a lot there. Right. So you've just got all of these different things going on. You know, like there's threats. There's definitely threats and concerns when it comes to dating. But we have her, like, ignoring certain things, but we don't know why, right? So this is the thing, right? It's, I think, when you're trying to show a certain thing, you need to counterbalance it 
with the wise, right? You know what I mean? Like, okay, if you're going to do this thing, even if you think mm, it could be a little dicey, it could be a bit of a meh, but so why are you doing it? Right? Why are you doing it? We have this, you know, there's information that comes out at the end. And it's kind of played like certain things weren't inquired about. But we don't really know because that's not what we see. Right? So you don't know, was something hidden or did someone not just ask? Right? What? What what's happening? What's going on? So so it's it's a weird balanced film. It just feels very uneven, really. You know, I don't know. Like other people might think different, but it didn't really portray. You know, a. Uh, the balance of an, a relationship, like even if it's a weird relationship, an uneven relationship, like we don't really see conversation, so you don't know, you know, who's doing what, who's leading what, who's, you know, trying to progress things. Like we see some awkward moments. You know, there's a weird argument in the film, which kind of comes out of nowhere, and you're just like, wait, what, 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 what was that? You know, these other weird kind of situations, like Taylor and uh, Margaret in a shop, and the guy asks a question, and like, hey, don't flirt with us. And it's just like, I mean, was he flirting? Or was he just trying to crack a shitty joke? Or, you know what I mean? Just trying to start a conversation. Like, it, it's, it's, yeah, it's an odd, odd film for me. I haven't read the short story. So I don't know how much it adheres to it, what things may have been changed, all of that kind of stuff. But, yeah, I don't know. It's, I feel like something like Promising Young Woman was a really good example of what this film was trying to do, you know? That one was just like, yo, that's killer, you know? So if you like Promising Young Woman, that person is along those lines, but for me, it doesn't reach that pinnacle, you know, so I think that gives you an idea of what this is, you know, and then it's just like, yeah, what kind of things do you, do you like, it's a bit like, um, if you, if you see, saw May, December, right, it screened during the last, uh, London Film Festival, it's on, uh, Oh gosh, where is it? It's not, I think it's on Sky in the UK. Um, but yeah, looking at certain situations, but kind of doesn't seem to fully jump into the subject matter. And that's what Cat Person felt like. But it is out. Right, it's on all your favorite VODs, it's on Netflix in the UK. So if it sounds like it could be for you, then people, yeah, go uh, go check it out. You know, the acting's fine, right? The, I think they do what they can with the script, you know? Like, I, I thought the, the dream sequences, the kind of scenarios, that was all shot well and everything. I mean, like Isabel Rossellini felt like she was wasted. Like her character doesn't really do anything. It's hardly in it. Yeah, I don't know. It's a it's an odd little film. It's an odd little film. But there you go. Cat person.